Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Nao Rapileng Mudutle is known for his exquisite pieces with immense detail and sophistication. His creations have been noticed across the globe and he has seen a number of runways. He is no stranger when it comes to the fashion industry and has set the pace for the local fashion scene quite high. He joins us live right now to chat about how he's had to make drastic changes to his business in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Hi, Orapileng. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. I am loving to see you right now because, honey, I've been having a fashion show for my furniture and it is not feeling me. <laughs> <laughs> but you look fabulous nonetheless. Thank you so much. So let me speak to the expert that you are. But before we get into all things fashion, how have you been coping during lockdown? I mean, it's nearly two months now. It's been two months. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it feels like an entire year. Mm -hmm. But however, um, it's been it's a critical time for you know young SME, SMEs, um, young businesses like ourselves. I mean to try and survive, um, given the circumstances. So we are trying to stay there, or we'll suppose and employ different strategies on how to bounce back. And talking about bouncing back, I mean, you are known for your ball gowns and evening dresses, which I can only imagine is not really in demand right now. So how do you restructure your brand and your business to accommodate our current situation? So, I mean, based on um, the kind of clientele we have built um, as a business over the years, it has really put us in not a completely bad position because we have quite a lot of clients that have been on our books for the longest time right now, um, for a year actually to be specific. So most of their weddings are just like moved to later to later on in the year and next year. But however, um, before the lockdown, we, me and my team sat down actually like employing this different strategies on how to be on the e-commerce and on the digital space and um, so and sell sorry and sell like commercial and easy easy accessible clothes to our consumers so there has been a com communication and conversation that we had before the lockdown so it's just that we got this we got interrupted there for a minute but then as soon as the the doors open, I think that that's what we're going to press that and starting on selling on to the e-commerce and, mm. and online. I find it so interesting to study a brand that you have created. You are relatively new in terms of being popular, top of everyone's mind when it comes to the South African fashion industry, but yet you've grown leaps and bounds in a very short amount of time. And you seem to have grown that loyal clientele that you're speaking about, huge names, South African celebrities, you've dressed them from head to toe. International celebrities, you've dressed them from head to toe. So are you going to continuously be moving on the same vein even post lockdown especially because these travel restrictions are so stringent um no definitely i mean it's a critical time so it means um everything is like spiraling into a different world the world is changing um i feel um we would have to well we are we are going to be communicating a different um narrative in terms of how we're going to sell to our consumers and how to virtually um, showcase our latest collections as opposed to having physical fashion shows and um, exploring the digital space in a way where we can communicate to our consumer better um, and also just like create much more a better environment for them to um, consume the product um, in a space where uh, the world is leading and it's going to be as it's going to be our new norm. Yeah, I am so ready for an Orapi Ling virtual fashion show. Trust me, <laughs> I've got my popcorn ready. I can already imagine myself on my bed with my tablet in front of me watching those models going down a virtual runway. Don't give it away. I want you to surprise us when it happens. Now talk about moving into different industries or rather different designs because you can't be making ball gowns during this time. Face masks have become a part of your daily style and everyone right now is using it as a fashion accessory. But not everyone can afford designer masks. So, do you have any DIY tips for our viewers at home on how they can make their very own masks at home? 
No, absolutely. I mean, there are different ways on how to pump up your your mask or take, you know, your old items like a T-shirt, you know, cut two holes on the side, turn it twice, uh, twist it twice on your face and um, it's a mask. Or you can take a bandana, which used to be one of our staple diet um, in fashion back in the days, where you can take that and just like wrap it around your mouth, but just make sure that it's clean all the time. And also your typical mask that uh, you buy from local designers, um, so, I mean, there are different ways for you to really spice it up and make it interesting. Okay. Um, according to the outfit you're wearing, because I feel it's going to be, you know, an important tool to one's outfit moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and you probably can't leave the house without it um, for the, the next coming months or year. Oh, for the foreseeable future, for sure. I once saw uh, a, something on YouTube, how to make a mask out of a sock. It's possible? <laughs> Google it. So I have to find out before you leave, you've decided to go into YouTube. Talking about YouTube tutorials, OM Style. Tell me about this platform very, very briefly. And why did you decide to go the educational and informative route? So I wanted to um, venture into this for the longest time actually this project i had it in mind since i was in tertiary because i felt um out of space when i enrolled my first year in fashion where we don't there's so much that the this the tertiary gives but i feel like there's just a lot of disconnect as a young and aspiring designer on how to build a brand um from scratch and it becoming a global phenomenal. So I wanted to be in a platform where I can actually educate, mm-hmm. you know, and designers um, and in a virtual space because everything is becoming digital and exploring digital media in order mm-hmm. to communicate conversations with up, up and coming designers. And you're the best person to do so, seeing what you've done with your brand. Thank you so much for starting these initiatives and being so focused and passionate about all things fashion. We're looking forward to see how, what the future has in store for you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, you we, we, you, well, you guys will definitely be seeing a lot from the brand. Um, different. Um, okay. Something that we haven't done before. Um, so, I mean, for me, I feel like YouTube channel is a start of how we can... Um, you know, expand the brand into, you know, different communications. So okay. there is a lot of so we just have to sit back. Have that <laughs> Take our time and enjoy <laughs> the process. I'm enjoying the process. I'm enjoying seeing you work. Thank you so much for joining us, Orapi Leng. All the best for the future. And thank you for giving us the fashion that gives us life. Thank you. Thank you, Palisa. Yeah. I have... Mwah! Bye. Between you and I, now that he's gone, I cannot wait for the next red carpet because I'm definitely going to be rocking one of his ball gowns. Now moving from fashion to finance. Coming up, we find out how FNB is providing financial relief for businesses suffering the impact of COVID-19 pandemic.